two-dimensional vectors, level 10. In this video, we're going to go over various examples involving unit vectors. Let's jump straight into the first example. Given vectors a and b, find the following. Okay, here we're given vectors a and b, written in terms of the standard unit vectors i and j. Recall that we can use this and the component form of a vector interchangeably. With this in mind, let's find the magnitude of vector a. So we go ahead and square each of the vector's components, in this case, i hat and j hat. Add the result and take the square root of the result, which simplifies to the square root of 13. Alright, now let's find 3 times vector a plus 4 times vector b. We first need to carry out a scalar multiplication for each vector as follows, making sure we distribute the scalar for each unit vector. Then we collect like unit vectors, which simplifies to 10 i hat plus 11 j hat. Alright, let's try the next example. Find a unit vector that has the direction opposite to vector v. Okay, similar to the previous problem, let's first find the unit vector by finding the magnitude of vector v. Using the Pythagorean theorem, we obtain 13 for the magnitude. Next, let's go ahead and normalize vector v by dividing each component by 13, as follows. This yields a unit vector equal to 12 over 13 i hat minus 5 over 13 j hat. Next, we want to find a vector that points in the opposite direction to this vector. The easiest way to find this vector is by multiplying the components of our unit vector by the scalar negative 1. Doing that, we obtain the following expression for our unit vector, negative 12 over 13 plus 5 over 13. Notice that unit vectors are useful in extracting the direction of a vector. Once you have the components for the direction of a unit vector, you're able to scale this unit vector to any length, and it will be parallel to the original vector. Let's try the next example. Find vector v with magnitude equal to 2 and the same direction as vector w, and then find the angle that vector v makes with a positive x-axis. Alright, we first need to find a unit vector that has the same direction as vector w. Once we have those components, we can easily scale the unit vector to obtain vector v. So we first need to find the magnitude of vector w. Using the Pythagorean theorem and simplifying, we obtain 2 root 3. Now we divide each of the components of vector w by this magnitude as follows. Next, we go ahead and take this unit vector and scale it by a factor of 2 to obtain vector v, which will have the same direction as vector w, but will have a magnitude equal to 2. Simplifying the expressions, we obtain 1 and the square root of 3 for the x and y components respectively. Now we need to find the angle that this vector makes with the x-axis. We can easily find this by using the components of the vector to form a right triangle and then use trigonometry to find the angle. In this case, we solve for theta by computing tangent inverse of the square root of 3, which equals 60 degrees or pi over 3 radians. Alright, let's go over the next example. Find the component form of vector v plus vector w given the magnitudes of vectors v and w and the angle that vector v and w make with a positive x-axis. Alright, here we need to find the component form of the resultant vector created by adding vectors v and w. We are given the magnitude and the direction of each vector in terms of theta, which is the angle that the vectors make with the positive x-axis. This means that we can denote the components of each vector by using the alternative form of a unit vector that makes use of trigonometric expressions. This is nothing more than using right triangle trigonometry to find the x and y components of the vector. So let's first find the components of vector v. Since this vector has a direction of 0 degrees relative to the positive x-axis, 
it will only have one component, in this case, i hat, since cosine of 0 equals 1, and sine of 0 equals 0. Then we go ahead and multiply the unit vector by the magnitude of vector v, obtaining the components 3 and 0. Next, let's do the same for vector w. Let's first find i hat and j hat by using right triangle trigonometry. In this case, i hat will be equal to cosine of 120 degrees, and j hat will be equal to sine of 120 degrees, which simplifies to the following expression. Then, we go ahead and multiply each component by the magnitude of vector w as follows. In the end, we obtain negative 5 over 2 and 5 square root 3 over 2 for the components of vector w. Lastly, we simply add the vectors component-wise as follows, obtaining the resulting vector 1 half and 5 square root 3 over 2. Notice that using angles to describe the direction is essentially an application of right triangle trigonometry. We will be making use of angles to denote the direction of vectors in various applications throughout our multivariable calculus course. Alright, let's go over the next example. Find scalars a and b such that vector v equals a times vector u plus b times vector w. The easiest way to figure out the scalars is by setting up a vector equation and separate it component-wise, and then solve the system of equations for both scalars, a and b. So let's go ahead and substitute the component forms of vector v, u, and w into the given vector equation. Next, let's rewrite each vector in terms of the standard unit vectors i and j. Next, let's go ahead and distribute scalars a and b. Then, let's add all the terms containing the unit vector i and add all the terms containing the unit vector j. By doing this and factoring out each of the unit vectors, we can clearly see that in order for this vector equation to be true, we need the i hat scalars and j hat scalars to be equal to each other. In other words, the equations 3 equals a plus b and the equation 3 equals 2a minus b must also be true. So we go ahead and solve this system of equations by adding the equations together and solving for a, and then use this value to solve for b. In the end, we need a to be equal to 2 and b to be equal to 1. All right, let's end the video by going over the final example. Find unit vectors parallel to and perpendicular to the graph f of x equals negative x squared plus 5 at the point 1, 4. All right, let's sketch the graph of f of x and the point to get a visual of this problem. We need to find vectors that are both parallel and perpendicular to this function at this particular point. In order to find a unit vector, we first need to determine the direction or components of a vector that is either parallel or perpendicular to this function at the given point, and then normalize the vector. We can easily find the direction of these vectors by using the slope of the tangent line at this point. We can figure this out by taking the derivative of the function and evaluating it at x equals 1. Doing that, we obtain negative 2 for the slope. This means that one possible vector that lies and has the same direction as this slope will be the vector with components 1 and negative 2. Let's call this vector v. So now, we need to find the magnitude of this vector, which ends up being equal to root 5. Now we can find the unit vector. Notice that there are two distinct unit vectors that are parallel to the graph at this point. We can denote these two unit vectors by multiplying the components of vector v by positive or negative 1 over the square root of 5. All right, to find the vectors that are perpendicular to this graph at this point, we essentially take the negative reciprocal of the slope of the tangent line, which in this case is 1 half. Then we find a vector, let's call it vector w, that has components along this slope. One possible vector would have components equal to 2 and 1. Now, let's normalize this vector so we find the magnitude of this vector 
which is equal to the square root of 5. And then we divide each of the vector's components by this scalar. Once again, notice that there are two unit vectors that are perpendicular to this function at the given point. So we need to multiply the components by positive and negative 1 over the square root of 5. Alright, in our next video, we will go over some common applications that make use of vectors.